Alright, what's up? We give all praises to Yahweh, Mahashem, Yahweh Shai, Mahashem Rakai Kodash. Double honors to the apostles that rule well. Salutations to the brothers of the four corners of the earth, pushing the truth and what? And sincerity. Uh, brother Ip got the mic. Shalom, Shalom, Yasharala. Again, uh, another double honors to the apostles, uh, GMS that rule well, and the rest of the prophets and Hawas and Bawas in the works of truth and sincerity. It's bringing our people back to the fold. Um, today's going to be um, a lesson that you go over when you first come in. But pretty much the rapture, Yahweh Shah's uh, second coming. First time he came, he came here to uh, wake up, you know, the elect. And he's still doing that now through his prophets. You know, so prophets that we look up to is prophets like um, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel. We also look up to the disciples because they were uh, ministering to their people to bring them back to the fold. So the Yahweh shot comes back a second time that we'll be ready. Okay, but every, we know that everybody's gonna get it. Two thirds of our people have to be destroyed. It means they went off and they never came back up to the fold. So that's why Yahweh shot has to do a, a, a second covenant. Okay, in this covenant, we're gonna have the laws in our inward hearts. That breath of life is gonna be reestablished. And that's what we're looking forward to. Um, and Yahweh is also going to have signs that he's coming back. And we're seeing that now, you know, nation against nation, like with everything that's going to Palestine. Uh, what else? Earthquakes. We had a lot of natural disasters last year. Um, Arctic. We've been having a lot of Arctic blasts. You know, all that is natural, but it is signs that the Lord is coming back. You know, um, I mean, shoot, since 2012, the tsunami with Japan. Right? Uh, even if even if it was the heart machine that did it, Yahweh, Yahweh, he still put it in the heat of my spirit to do what he did. And we know that through uh, Micah chapter 2 and 1. Uh, the economy's messed up, okay? Um, the amount of money you're getting paid for, you know, unless you're doing something like being a doctor or a historian, the money you wait, you're making is not enough for the cost of living. The cost of living is probably about 25 to 30 an hour right now, you know, and that's probably not including if you have kids, you know, if you're in debt, you probably have to make more than that to really be, to really be in a good, uh, what's the word, a good position in this society, you know, it shouldn't be like that. Yeah. This is John 17, verse 16. Mm -hmm. They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Mm -hmm. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth, and as thou hast sent me into the world, even so have I also sent them into the world. And for their sakes I sanctify myself, that they also might be sanctified through the truth. That's right, we're, we're sanctified through the word, okay, and that's that's how my is like. How we're sanctified, because we try our best to keep the law, statutes, and commandments, and with the knowledge that we receive, that's why I the knowledge that we receive, we freely give it by coming here in the highways and byways mm -hmm. and when the Spirit leads us to do sit-down videos, okay? And also breaking bread with other brothers. Like, um, I, I don't do it too much myself. I should do it more, but like watching these other camps, like, um, like I said, Adam Abbott. You know, like watching brothers like Adam Abbott and stuff, you know, preaching out there in Baltimore City. It's good to watch that sometimes. So, you know, you so mm -hmm. You know, they're still out here preaching the word, even if so some there might doctrine. be some errors mm -hmm. in their doctrine. They're still out here trying to wake up the nation of Israel, and that's what matters the most. With that being said, can we start with Joel 2, verse 1 to 2? Joel 2? Yeah, 1 to 2. 1 to 2. Joel 2, 1 to 2. Blow ye the trumpet in Zion and sound the alarm in my holy mountain. Come. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble. For the day of the Lord cometh, for it is not at hand. Right, so uh, yeah, before you read the next verse, that trumpet, the Lord's going to sound that trumpet when he comes back. And that's what happened a lot of times when these empires would go to war. They, it would either be a bell or they'll <laughs> sign that trumpet. Sometimes yeah. the trumpet had different meanings too. You know, it wasn't always war. It could be a time for everyone to wake up. You know, um, it could have been time for, you know, a huge meeting. There was different reasons for a trumpet, but this okay. trumpet... That's going to be sound. It's going to be for war. Got gotcha, you, man. Huh. This is Numbers 10, 9 to 10. And if ye go to war in your land against the enemy that oppresses you, 
then ye shall blow the alarm with the trumpet. That's right. So you got to blow that alarm. The Lord comes back. It's going to be. It, that's going to be the next scripture you're going to bring out. But every eye is going to see him. They're also going to hear as well. They're going to be. They're going to be shook. It's, what is scripture saying? Then, which says, when the Lord speak, would you, would you not fear? Mm. Or when the lions in the city, you know. So now, when the Lord sounds that trumpet, when he when you hear his voice, everyone's going to tremble. Just the same way everyone trembles in an earthquake. Because he has uh, his voice is the sound of many waters. You go to the ocean, you hear those war those uh, waves. You know, it sounds loud. It sounds loud. Roaring. You know, and it's scary. <laughs> Yeah. Yep. A day of darkness and a gloominess, a day of clouds and a thick darkness, as the morning spread upon the mountains. Mm -hmm. A great people and a strong, there has not been ever the light. Neither shall any more after it, even to the years of many generations. Uh, Craig and Raw, I think that strong people is always talking about the missiles. Nobody's seen an atomic war like that. Nobody's seen a nuclear war like that. You know, it ain't gonna be World War One, World War Two, the Civil War, you know, the wars that the Roman Empire did, the Punic Wars. They all, all that's gonna be like nothing compared to what America's gonna get. Huh. It's gonna be missiles sent back and forth, but America's not gonna win that, right? So the Lord comes back and his target is America. America is what, what's gonna be destroyed. And the Lord has to go back on his word. And it says a day of what, darkness, gloominess? That doesn't mm. sound like peace. Like peace to me. That sounds like, you know, a very depressing day for the wicked. But when you see these like paintings or, you know, the the world knows best Jesus with the halo on his head, he's like, he looks peaceful and feminine. You know, like he's about to give you some flowers. Matthew 1034 said he's gonna come back with a sword. And with a sword, you slay your enemies. Then he say, um, they who not have me reign over them. Bring him bring hither, right? Slay, slay them before me. Mm -hmm. That sounds like violence to me. Okay. Um, if you don't got nothing, we'll go to Revelation 1. If you got so, something, we'll, uh, he's looking for it. Oh, Isaiah, and, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, my bad. I was gonna say more of the world. That's what I was gonna say. That was a good example for that trumpet. You know, but yeah, my bad. Isaiah 54, verse 6, 17. No weapon that is formed against against thee shall prosper, and every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment thou shalt condemn. Mm -hmm. Man, that oh, no. wow. that, that's a good scripture. Though. Man, <laughs> this is the heritage of the servants of Yahweh, and their righteousness is of me, says Yahweh. Um, yeah, I think I have to learn that one more time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, yeah, we, we condemn, you know, those that are on the wrong doctrine. When they come up to us, we could, we have to condemn them through the, the precepts, through the spirit of the Lord, you know. And other brothers are doing it as well. You know, don't come up to the, you can't come up to the prophets and try to teach them. When you come up here, you you come here to be taught. We're gonna listen to what you got to say, but if you're here. You, you know, if you hear, you gotta listen more than you speak. God. You know, you come up to the, you know, the house of uh, Yashirah. Yeah, go to uh, Revelation one and seven. Revelation one verse seven. Behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him. And they also which pierced them, and all the kindreds of the earth shall well because of him. Even so, Salah. That's right. See, when he comes to clouds, we already know this clouds talking about those chariots they're going to come with. Mm -hmm. Right? The same clouds that he, uh, he gave to the nation of Israel when he fled Egypt. Yeah, he gave us what? A, a pillar of light, you know, by, um, by night. Mm -hmm. You know, in the day he guided us. But this time he's going to come with those chariots to destroy the wicked. And as I said, every eye is going to see him, just mm. like it did in, um, every eye saw him on Independence Day. When that big UFO came, every, every everywhere around the world, they was looking at the sky and they seen that UFO. Okay, so that's what it's going to look like. This is a precept. Yep. Isaiah 66, 15 through 17. For behold, Yahweh will come with fire mm -hmm. and with chariots like a whirlwind to render his anger with fury and his rebuke of flames of fire. For by fire and by his sword will Yahweh plead with all flesh, and the slain of Yahweh shall be many. 
they that sanctify themselves and purify themselves in the gardens behind one tree, in the midst eating swine flesh, and the abomination and the mouse shall be yep. consumed together, says Yahweh. That's right. So the UFOs come, they're going to have those beams that he show, shows in the movie. Those beams are going to be zapping the wicked along with those missiles. Mm -hmm. It's going to be indignation. And those UFOs, they move fast. What well, tells us they're IFOs because they're identified, but those chariots, they move fast. They're like a will within a will, so they ain't going to be nowhere you can run. They ain't going to be nowhere you can hide. You hide from the missile, it's going to be a UFO. You hide from the UFO, you know, the Lord's going to use his prophets to destroy the wicked as well. And that's why when you send that, uh, you send the trailer on the group chat, uh -huh, the, about Quiet Place too. A Quiet Place Right? Too, yeah. Because those monsters really is a representation of angels. So an angel's going to get a piece of this devil too. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Right? And it showed you in another movie, uh, I think with Chris Pratt. And, 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 and angels. Uh, tomorrow, was, tomorrow's war. Yeah, tomorrow's war. I think. And, uh, and uh, <laughs> the one that was invading that was keeping the Sabbath. Yeah, it was one day. It was one day <laughs> they went in. Um, yeah, one they day. They were not attacked. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so day, it goes right. to show you that they, these directors know the scriptures and they watch us, the brothers that's in the highways and byways. You know? You know, and, and you, you got to remember this, this is a particular Muslim brother named Rizza. He said, the enemy study us. They study us to the T. What you think Tuskegee Airmen uh, was that uh, was that experiment was about? They were studying us, right? Like they out. know what these niggas like. They know niggas like greasy food. They know these niggas like to get fucked up every weekend. They clone Tyrone. Yeah, they clone Tyrone. So what they do? They benefit uh, of uh, they they prosper through our demise, so to speak. You know, because they study us. So we gotta study our enemy. Yeah. Right? Yeah, know well, how we study our enemy? Through just as Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shah. Yeah. It also says never trust on the enemy, too. Never trust so a lot of y'all, when the MOTV is uh, released to the public, y'all gonna be trusting them. Mm -hmm. Y'all black women, y'all trust this Edomite with these pills he's prescribing you. When you have a cold, you know, when, you, when you're not feeling well, and then you just end up feeling worse. Yeah. You're trusting your enemy with these foods he's giving you. Okay, or what? or when there's a new president about to be elected, you're trusting him by voting. Why are you voting? It ain't gonna change nothing. And I think uh, there's a law in Deuteronomy it says we're only supposed to uh, elect one of our brethren to rule over us. We're not supposed to elect the Edomite. Y'all thought Obama was your people. Obama was an African. He wasn't an Israelite. He would be. Oh my God, I gotta vote for Donald Trump. I gotta vote for Biden. You you're just in the matrix. They want you to do that. They want you to care about that. They want you to care about the Super Bowl. Ooh, that's what you're talking about. Wow, what is it? Um, we're going right. to minute. We're gonna look for that scripture to edify y'all. Um, Deuteronomy 17 and 15. I was thinking 13. I was in 18. So um, I was, from, was chapter chapter of, yeah, Deuteronomy 17 and 15. Yeah. Deuteronomy 17, verse 15. Thou shalt in any wise set him king over thee, whom you have thy power would choose. One from among thy brethren, thy brethren, shall that set a king over thee. Thou mayest not see a stranger over thee, mm -hmm. which is not thy brother. We know they're a stranger. They're a stranger to us. They're an they're the real enemy. Because they're not part of the twelve tribes of Israel. They're a heathen, a non-Israelite. Why would you want a non-Israelite, someone who's not under the covenant, to rule over you? And then it's and then it's old, decrepit white man on top of that. Mm -hmm. It's not even, you know, someone who has some some type of, I don't know, a young mind, I should say. Okay, someone who could really rule his nation, you know. 
it's, it's not a Napoleon or Alexander the Great. You know, you got these old white men in the office. Mm -hmm. And then they're most likely puppets. It's the ones behind them that's really pulling the strings. You're, like I said, your votes really don't matter. Everything everything is orchestrated. Democracy is supposed to be the people rule. The, the people ain't ruling. Now you gotta pay taxes. That alone shows that you ain't ruling nothing. Yep. This is Jeremiah 30, verse 21. I start at 20. Their children also shall be as aforetime, and their congregation shall be established before me. And I will punish all that oppress them. And their nobles shall be of themselves. Mm. And their government shall proceed from the midst of them. And I will cause him to draw near, and he shall approach unto me. For who is this that engaged his heart? To approach on to me, says Yahweh. Mm. So the point is that we are supposed to appoint nobles and governors from among what? Ourself. Among our people. That's right, among our people. You know? Um, trying to give an example. So nobody, no, no Israelite is supposed yeah. to be in a, at the voting polls. That's We're right. We're not supposed to be there. Yeah. And I've always been in my spirit, since I was his age, not to go and vote. Yeah. You know? One time I got pressured, I went over there, and I went right back in my car and went home. Yeah, the earth is given to the hand of the wicked. Mm -hmm. The wicked is one who rules it. So how will we have any control over what the wicked does if this is his, his rulership? And that's why I waited for the Lord to come back and destroy the wicked so that we can have rulership again. Let's go, um, if it wasn't in a lineup, let's go to Sirach 10 and 7 about the transition. Sirach 10 and 7? Um, yeah, I think it's 10 and 7. Sirach. Oh, yeah, Sirach. Please ask the question. Okay. So the Lord decides who's going to be, who's in control. Oh, my bad. Verse um, eight. Yeah, verse okay. eight. That's not a stuff. Yeah. Good. yeah, yeah. Uh, let's go to six. Uh, so rock 10, verse six. Bear not hatred to thy neighbor for every wrong and do nothing at all. But in injurious practice, to injurious practice means to be hurtful towards your brother. Oh. Don't do that, right? And we're not supposed to be a hatred towards our brother. Yeah. No matter how wicked they might be. Oh, my God. <laughs> you know, we got some wicked brothers out here in this world. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, if you hold a grudge, it's like letting somebody live in your head rent free. Ah, oh, that's a good point. Good point. You know? And, um, that means he, over he overtook you. Yep, he won in the long mm -hmm. run. But you, you holding on to something that he's done to you years ago. Also, I mean, in a way that kind of goes towards the Edomites as well, because when they came here, the Native Americans was their neighbor, mm -hmm. and they had hatred towards him. Mm -hmm. You know, Esau had hatred towards his brother Jacob. Come, come. Oh. It said, "Pride is hateful before Yahweh and men, and by both do it want commit iniquity." That's right. So pride, you know, that's what Esau. Esau is full of pride. He feel like he can't be taken down at all. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And it said, "Hateful before Yahweh and men." Yeah, it, the Most I can't stand that, right? And the brothers, the elect, right? And the sisters that practice their righteousness can't stand the pride of Esau. When you go to like different, down south, especially like Texas, what it said, Texas pride. Texas pride. Right? Because they are so proudful, man. And they feel like they can't be taken. They're already making plans for 2030. They're making plans for 2040. They're already thinking ahead. And, and most of the time, when you see their movies, these damn devils never say God will. Nah, they, right? don't, like, they don't like that. They always make they promises like, like in their movies. Y'all promise. I'm yeah. going to come and save you. Promise. You hear that a lot in their damn movies. Yeah. How the hell you know you're going to make it? Well, there's a script written in that particular movie. So most of the time, they always come and they live to their promise. But in this world, real world, he saw, he does say, I promise. How you know? How you know you're going to make it the next day? Because he's prideful. That's why. Right? You know. Mm-hmm. What gives them their pride a lot is their uh, the sword. The, oh, the yeah. sword was their blessing. I work with these Good Edomites. Point. I work with them. They're always talking about guns, about to go into the shooting range, about hunting. You know, you, I mean, you can't tell me the Bible is wrong. You can't tell me that. Yeah. He's, wasn't Edomite, um, wasn't Edom a hunter? You like to go out and hunt and make up go on tents? Mm -hmm. and I'm not saying you can't, you know, buy a gun, but, you know, that's, that's all this in their speech. Guns and dogs. You know, that's what they love the most. Yeah. It said, uh, because of unrighteous dealing, injuries, 
and riches got by deceit. The kingdom is translated from one people to another. Righteous dealings, um, right? The gold that they took from the Aztecs, Native mm -hmm. Americans, um, the drugs they put in our community, to oil. To this very day? Yeah, to this very day. Um, oil that they're taking from these other nations. Um, what about uh, also the food, the food trade, you know, pushing their nasty food to different states, to different countries. Injury, we, I mean, we could talk all day about injuries, the, the, the slavery methods they did. You know, the shackles they put around our necks, the lynchings, you know, they'll, they'll, um, I think they would, they'll tie a rope to one leg, to one horse, and do the same thing to the other leg, and get the horses to run in two different directions, mm -hmm. to split mm -hmm. you apart. All right, they'll force feed us to pork. All that was injuries, okay, that was done to us. Um, it's, it's still going on. These prescriptions they're giving you, nasty foods, it gives you injuries, you know, it makes your body ill. All these riches they got was got by the sea. They didn't get none of their riches through honor. They got it through sword. They got it by slaying other nations. That's why it says the kingdom is translated from one people to another. The Lord has to come back and, and intervene. We can't do it ourselves. Mm -hmm. He has to come back through this rapture that's been prophesied for many and many, many years, through many generations. Since the times of shackles around the next, we were saying it's sweet and low, sweet chariot. Because we knew the Lord was going to come back and save us. However, a lot of y'all thought it was because it was civil rights of the, that that song was probably talking about. It wasn't a civil rights movement, okay? Did it make it better for us? You know, when you when, in the first glance, yeah, it did. But you would get it from a first glance because mm -hmm. we're not in, you know, shackles. Racism is supposedly dying down, even though it's really still there. And there's never, there's never going to be a time of true integration. There's going to be a difference between us and other people. And the Lord said that standard says Deuteronomy chapter thirty-two and eight. When he said he divided the nations, he made us, you know, he made us different ethnicities for a reason. If the Lord wanted to be a new world order, he would make everyone look the same. He would make it just one nation. But no, he made different nations. And he did that for a reason. Okay? And Israel is the Lord's portion because we're going to be on top. That's why the kingdom has to be translated to us. It has, it has, there always has to be a ranking. There has to be an order. These, are, these heathens, these non-Israelites, they're going to be under us. Mm -hmm. Right? Eat them though. You gonna you gonna be the bottom of the barrel for what you did. You did us the worst. Okay. They need any other nation. Yes. Yeah, I'm gonna read it in the GNT. It. Yep. Uh, Sirach ten. And so uh, six to. Or are you just gonna read that eight? I'm gonna eight, 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 eight. All right. This is uh, Sirach ten verse eight GNT. Injustice. That's what he's about. Mm -hmm. Injustice, arrogance, and wealth cause nations to fall from power. Ah oh, man. Right? And others then rise to take their place. Mm -hmm. Right? So yeah. others going to take his place, man. Mm -hmm. He rose into power, but others going to take his place. Who's that? The Israelites. Right. The Israelites going to take his place. Because we yeah. got next according to Daniel. Uh -huh. Right? That's good, yeah. uh, chapter 7. Yeah. We are only dust and ashes. This is you, Esau. We are only dust and ashes. What have we got to be proud? Of our bodies decay even while we are alive. Wow. Your body decays. Yeah. Even though you're in power, you decay. A lot of you got cancer. A lot of you have your drugs. Yeah. A lot of you have your welfare. Yeah, but at the end of the day, you're in power, but your body decays. Well, we in a, our kingdom, through the spirit of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah, we're going to live long lives, man. Like the, like the Asgardians. I know it's mythology or fiction, but. Mm -hmm. The Asgardians, the longer they live, the stronger they get. Come on. Like Thor. Thor's like 1,500 years old. You know, he still looks young. So yeah, Ma Matulu, Matuzula, like that, right? Yeah, Matuzula. Lived to 8 to 869. Eight yeah. Right? It said, verse 10, because you are a long illness. You are a long disease, right? A illness puzzles the doctor. Even a king may be alive today and dead tomorrow. When a person dies, and he then possesses his worms, flies, and maggots. This is Esau. Pride has it, pride has it beginning when a person abandons the Lord, his maker. Pride is like a fountain pouring out sin. And whoever persists in it will be full of wickedness. And that's what you are, man. You're yeah. full of wickedness, man. He think he think his, his kingdom's gonna reign forever. I really think it is because he has the atomic bomb. He has nuclear capabilities. His military is strong. 
Lord could wipe all that in an instant. Mm -hmm. Shoot, he could. He could. He doesn't have to destroy America with nuclear missiles. I feel like the Lord's doing it because it's more poetic that way. That your own weapon is going to destroy you. He, he could destroy America with an earthquake. He oh, wants me, to. Me, I got more. Huh. I got more. Huh. This is uh, I'm still on thirteen. The Sirach ten verse thirteen. Right, GNT. This is why the Lord brought terrible punishment on some people and completely destroyed them. The Lord has overthrown kings and put humbler, humbler people in their place. Is the meat shall inherit the earth, right? God. Yeah. The Lord has pulled up nations by the roots and established humbler ones in their place. Wow. The Lord has overthrown empires. Right? And completely devastated their land. What's going to happen to America? Going to devastate this land. Mm. Those missiles. It's not going to be a fire that you can sit by with your marshmallows and go hunting the next morning or that night. It ain't going to be like that. You know, your pride is going to be your downfall. Arrogance, arrogance can destroy you. When you, mm -hmm. when you arrogance make you complacent. Esau's complacent right now because he's in his kingdom. You know, you think everything's going to be good. You know, he's going he's gonna to stay as the, the world's superpower. Now the Lord's gonna take all that down, man. Mm -hmm. it's, it's just a matter of time. And, and the humble, the humbler king is gonna set over Esau is us. Come on. You no, know, because we're, we're naturally humble. We have more compassion. We have more a uh, soul. We actually have a soul, man. You know that's why. That's why the civil rights movement. We didn't want to integrate with them. We didn't. We didn't want to slay Esau. We just wanted. We just wanted peace. Like, hey, you know, just leave us alone, basically. That's why the Lord has to. You know, he has to give us that spirit to destroy them. According to Genesis 49 about the line, you should rouse him up. Yeah. yeah. I'm glad you mentioned that, that we, we humble and compassionate people. And the most I say, he's merciful and long suffer, suffering also. So, you know, as many times we, we cleave to the heathens, and after the heathens subdue us, the most High always come in and wreck, or, uh, rescue, rescue us. us. And this happened repetitiously, right? Lord, Lord, please help us. We go back to our fathers, so our worshiping <laughs> idols. Yeah. Lord, Lord, help us. Because what? He has merciful and he's so compassion towards us. And that's how we are with uh, with these other nations. Are oh, they going to make it? You know, we're so compassionate and we become soft yeah. and naive to their wickedness. Yo, Tom is a good man at work. Child is a good man. <laughs> he gave me donuts. <laughs> but the scripture said, uh, never trust thy enemy. Yep. So it's iron. So it's his, what? his wickedness. You know, we got this compassion towards other nations, but we don't have compassion towards ourselves, and that's sad. Yeah. But it's going to show you that we are Yasharala. We are the prince and the, uh, and, and the power of who? Of Yahweh Shem Yahweh man. Right? right? We take after the most high hearts, man. Right? That's why we are so naive and so gullible to the devices of the so called white men. Nah, the white men never going to do that. Nah, nah, nah. <laughs> nah, McDonald's some good food. Taco Bell some good food. Nah, nah. Yeah. You know? Yeah, that's conspiracy. Uh, I'm not going to listen to that. That's conspiracy, man. It goes back you to know? the Stockholm Syndrome, too. Yeah, it does. They love their uh, captors. Yeah, you try to start trusting your oppressor. Yeah. You know? You know, oh, sorry. I was going to say, it's crazy. Do people really think, you know, he could change, you know, that... That Edomites ever going to, we're ever going to be equal to him. You know, we're not equals. We're technically above them. You know, but right now, in this king, they're above us. You know, they own the banks. You know, they own everything. You know, we want to, we want a loan, we got to go to them. You know, even if you have a house, you, you, you know, that's technically still their land. They could take your, your land from you. The same way they took it from the natives. Yeah. So, something about you can make an unclean thing clean. You can uh, make yeah. an unclean thing clean. That's right. Make sure you Okay, yeah. You want to do it? Yeah. All right, before I bring that out, let me finish it. Read yeah. this real quick. 16. Yeah. Sirach 10, verse 16. GNT. The Lord has overthrown empires and completely devastated their land. He destroyed some so completely that they are not even remembered anymore. Mm -hmm. They take the Egyptians, yeah, right? Did. They take out Sodom and Gomorrah, yeah. right? And the most uh, people don't remember that, right? It said, the creator never intend for human beings to be arrogant and violent. But guess what? The so-called white man is arrogant and he's violent. He is not your friend and never will be. Okay? That's right. All right. Let me go to that scripture. Can you make an unclean thing clean? It's impossible. You know, how the fuck can you make 
a, a pork hot dog kosher when pig is already a, a clean animal, they scavengers. You can't make a pig kosher. You can't do that. Yeah. Because the word kosher means clean. Yeah, right? Yeah. No matter how much times you cook that pork, you still gonna have that parasite. You know, it's not it's not the body wasn't designed to do that. You know, especially the Israelites, they weren't designed to eat pork and these crabs and lobsters. Yep. This is uh Job 14 verse 4. Who can't bring a clean thing out of an unclean? Not one. So you can't make Esau righteous. Yeah. It's impossible. Yeah. You cannot make this devil righteous no matter what you do. No matter how many times he goes to church, or he says he loves you, he's sorry about what happened in slavery, you know, he gets baptized, <laughs> which isn't even true baptism, you know. It's not even true baptism to an Israelite. See, the Edomite get, getting dipped in supposedly holy water is definitely not true baptism, you know. I got you. Yeah. This is Isaiah 26, and I'm going back to Job. Yeah. Isaiah 26, verse 10. Let favor be shown to the wicked, yet will he not learn righteousness? Wow. In the land of uprightness, will he deal unjustly and will not behold the majesty of the Lord? Yeah, it's, it's in his nature. It's like, it's like trying to pet a lion. No, no matter how close you get to that lion, that lion's going to eventually turn on you. Lion wasn't meant to, especially at this at this point in time. The lion wasn't meant to be a household animal, you know. No matter what you do, so the Edomites, you know, you try to teach them love, and compassion, war is still gonna be in their hearts, no matter what they say. Yeah, you you could raise up in the conda. You could yeah. raise up in the conda until it's a it's still in the egg. Yeah. Right. You feed the conda. You, yeah. You went to the pet store, got some yeah. mice and shit. <laughs> you know, you got all different yeah. types of animals, small animals, so he could. So he could get big. But the animal instinct's gonna take over. So the animal, the anaconda got big, right? He feel like, you know, the anaconda was, it was in the bed together yeah. and so on. So the anaconda said, yo, I'm fucking hungry. Yeah. So the anaconda wrapped himself in a coil, and as he was snuffing, the, snuffing that dude out, yo, the, the dude was like, yo, I've been feeding you, taking care of you, yeah. you know what I'm saying? The anaconda said, motherfucker, you know I was a snake. <laughs> There you go. No matter what. Yeah. You will not learn righteousness. Yeah, he's not going to learn that. Yeah. Oh, Psalm 55. Go ahead. Yeah, I and mean, the Edomite, Edomites is uh, equivalent to a snake. That, and the serpent, in Genesis chapter 3, he was uh, the spirit of Edom. Right? Because uh, the serpent was sub to, or he was cunning. And that, that that's a good uh, way to describe Edom. He's sub to and cunning. Mm -hmm. The way he does certain things, you know, the way he, you know, makes you think that. You know, these uh these foods are good for you and all that. And that's his cunning nature. Con. This is uh this is Psalm fifty eight, verse one. Con. Do you do, do ye intend speak speak righteousness, O congregation? Do you judge uprightly, O ye sons of men? Yea, in heart ye work wickedness, mm -hmm. ye weigh the violence of your hands in the earth. That goes yeah. back to Job uh, 24, was that verse 7? Yeah. So the earth is given to the hands of the wicked. Yeah. The wicked are estranged from the womb. They go astray as soon as they be born. Speaking what? Lies. lies. Their poison is like the poison of a serpent. They are like the deaf adder that stoppeth hear her, her ear, which would not hearken to the voice of charmers, charming never so wisely. Break their teeth. What is their teeth? The military. As it was saying, weapons. Yep. Right? Break their teeth, O Yahweh, in their mouth. Break out the great teeth of a young lion, O Yahweh. Because when you take the teeth of a lion, <laughs> how you gonna devour yeah. you? Yeah, that's his power. He right can there. hit you with the with the paws. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But you can survive. Yeah. But when you take the his power out of his mouth, yeah. man, he's on, he ain't gonna do he ain't gonna do nothing. Yeah, like if, they, if a lion gets his jaw broke, especially in the wild, they, they eventually, you know, die because they can't eat. You know, because the lion's designed to chew on meat. You know, like, uh, what they eat, buffalo mm -hmm. for the most? If you take that power away from the lion, he can't survive no more. Yeah. You know? So. There was one at Looney Tunes when Roger Rabbit was fucking with this lion. <laughs> <laughs> so I think, uh, I think uh, for some reason, the lion had dentures. His dentures came out of his mouth yeah. and Bugs Bunny was fucking with him. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because <laughs> the power was in his mouth. Yeah. 
Yeah, like for some uh, snakes, like you know those snake charmers, they take their fangs out. For the snake, they gotta take the fangs out so they can do that snake charming crap they do. Mm -hmm. So they won't, you know, they won't get hurt. So you take the, the fangs away from a snake, the snake can't really, can't, do shit. It can't hurt you. Yeah. Unless it's an anaconda, you know, anaconda can wrap around you, but you know, the average snake won't be able to hurt you without its fangs. Yeah, there's certain uh, animals that could take uh, a cobra with, you know, a mamba, right? Yeah. Uh, I think it's one with Typhon. Ty, uh, Ty Pan. Yeah. That's a, one of a, a deadly, a deadly snake. I think it's in Japan. Yeah. Mostly in Asia, right? Uh, Python. What else? And all these. No, no, not and and the, guess what? The most I made one better than the other. Because even though it might be a cobra, right? That could stand seven feet tall. Still, who could take it out? A little furry animal, a, mo a mongoose, yeah. Yeah, a ferret, true. That's true. right? A honey badger. Yeah. A honey honey badger could take uh, 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 a cobra or venom, yeah. right? Either he just sleep it off or he just wake it wake up. They don't like immune. Yeah, yeah, they, yeah. they could be immune to it, right? But guess what? They could fuck up a, a cobra. I'm going to tell you who could fuck up a cobra. A fucking ca a house cat. Yeah, I was little, well, I was literally about to say that. Yeah, they're uh, a house cat. Yeah, their their reaction time is milliseconds faster than a snake. They reflect this out of this yeah. world, man. Yeah. yeah, furry little animal, man. That's yeah. a house cat. Yeah, could take a snake. Could take out a snake. Yep. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're, yeah, they're, yeah, your reaction time is milliseconds faster than a snake. So a snake can't even, <laughs> you know, can't even let, you know, get his jaws in a cat before the cat, you know, smacks it out the way. Yep. <laughs> Yeah, I saw the video on that. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, uh, oh, yeah, Salakia. We'll go back to uh, Job. Okay. It said, uh, Job 14, verse 4. Who can bring a clean thing out of a unclean? Not one. See, his days are determined. The numbers of his month are with thee. That has appointed his bounds that he cannot pass. Mm. You know? Yeah, so that's the... Uh, it's about the water, right? Mm -hmm. That water can't pass. Lord yeah. said that decree right there. So that's and, why, yeah. I'm not to cut you off it, but you know, the one, the Kansas Chief Parade. Right. I don't know, a lot of brothers and sisters were talking to me about it in, in my car, how there was, a, I think it was a Mexican in the Jake, mm -hmm. and killing crackers over there in, uh, in Kansas. Oh, shoot. Right, spraying them up. You know, yo, guess what? Uh, Jake's is getting tired. And that was the northern kingdom. That was the southern kingdom. Yeah. Came together. Yeah. I think they 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 they, they, they apprehended them, yeah. so to speak. And uh, they were spraying on them damn devils over there. Yeah. Jake's is getting tired. Jake's is getting tired. That's beautiful. Northern and southern kingdom coming together. I mean, I'm not I'm not saying it's beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> they committed the crime, and they going to definitely do the time. Yeah, they're gonna do the time. But a lot of people got killed that day. Yeah. And the Kansas Chief for a parade, man. You know, people can't even party no more these days, man. Yeah. You got to be real selective who you uh, yeah. who, who you mix it with, or who you party or who you socialize with. You got to be real careful these days. Yeah, somebody brings guns to the party and get trigger happy. Mm -hmm. You know, they're probably not having the best life, so they'll take that anger out on others. Yep. Yeah. You know, that's why the Lord, He got to bring light, in, light to this dark place. The world's in gross darkness. Oh. Uh, you know, can't even have a good time with that. people. You know, you might try to go to a house party, and it's your own people pulling out a gun on you, saying you gotta go, because they don't, they don't know who you are. Mm -hmm. You know, we're all Israelites, we're all supposed to, you know, welcome each other with open arms. But you gotta be on your P's and Q's these days. That's why I can't wait for the Lord to come, he's gonna, he's gonna wipe that away. We're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna be back in unity. We're gonna be back in unity, man. Mm -hmm. That's why the Black Panther movement was so powerful, because it was brothers and sisters in unity. But since it's not our time to rule, that's why, Stuff like that can only last for so long. And it goes to show you, like Hugh and Newton and, and, and these guys, right? They didn't know the scriptures. Yeah. They, they do the scriptures. They want to come against the so-called white man because we here to serve a what? A prison sentence. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Some of them would be alive to this very day. You know? Yeah. Because at the end of the day, they didn't know the scriptures. That's right. Uh, this is uh, Surat 19, just the back up. Uh -huh. Surat 19, verse 17. Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thy heart. Thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy neighbor and not suffer sin upon them. Thou shalt not avenge nor bear any grudge against the children of thy people. But thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. 
That's right. And that's talking about amongst us, mm -hmm. amongst the Israelites. Because the Edomite will try to use this against you. Like, oh, it says, love thy neighbor. It wasn't talking about you. He saw you're not our neighbor. Yeah. But the scripture said, Deuteronomy, about a stranger. Um, we're not supposed to let a stranger rule over us. Mm -hmm. You're a stranger. You're not the neighbor. You know, that was talking about the Israelites. And I'm pretty sure if you go to the top of the chapter there, you will probably say, uh, oh, Israel. Like just in Acts 2, verse 21, it said, um, you know, who so ever shall be, shall be saved, ye men of Israel. Mm. You know, if you read the next verse, mm -hmm. you know, so there's certain things that Edomite or Hedomite try to come up with, but that's why you said you got to search the scriptures. Or like you read John 3, 16, it says, love the, uh, that the Lord came to save the world. You know, but when you read John 17, 9, it says, pray, the Lord said, he, um, pray not for the world. I'm going to bring that out real quick, just so I'm not saying it wrong. John 17, 9, I pray for them. I pray not for the world. I pray for them which they has, which thou has given me, for they are done. See, Hawashah, when he came back, he came back for his people. He came back to bring Israel to the fold. You know? Or they'll try to use a uh, Gentile. You look up the word Gentile, it means a heathen or um, an Israelite foreigner. You know, Israelite who became a stranger through his ways, through his actions. First mm -hmm. Corinthians 12 and 2 says, um, what it said, uh, I remember when, remember when you were Gentiles led away by these dumb idols. Can, can a, a natural Gentile become an Israelite? No. They could try, but we just read it. said you can't make an unclean thing clean. It was meant to be unclean. It wasn't meant to eat shark or uh, pork. And what was what was the is known as in the beginning of Genesis? They was known as the beasts of the field. So they were meant to be unclean. And that's why we get sick of, and that's why these are, uh, yeah. these are uh, what's that, the hospital, Emergency room is full of us because we eating crabs and shrimps yeah. and, and pigs, yeah. right? And we not and the Most High declared that that we're not supposed to be eating these unclean animals. So when we eat them, we, we get real sick. That's why Esau always pushing the baconator, always pushing pork BLT. towards our people. <laughs> and when you go to the supermarket, the pork section is about this big. Yeah, it has its own section. Yeah. Yeah. While the lamb section is this small <laughs> and expensive, and, you know, and very expensive. Yeah. He, he know, this is all done by design. Because why? He study, he study us, and we are his enemy, and he knows us. Right? Lamb, lamb has a lot of protein. Lamb and turkey, those those two meats are good when you're trying to. If you're eating, if you have meat in your diet, those are good meats to eat for protein. Yeah. And like it said, for these clean uh, meats, the prices are higher. Organic lamb, higher, uh, right? Uh, uh, organic beef, grass-fed beef, higher. Yep. <laughs> he knows, right? It's all right. They want to eat healthy. I'm going to charge you price, what, double for this uh, organic grass-fed uh, steak. Or even to get eggs. Eggs is, like, more organic. You can't really eat the best eggs because you could probably get, like, what, six at Walmart, you can get 60 eggs for, like, 13. They're not, they're probably not going to be the best eggs for you, you know? You get, <laughs> you get organic Organic, like a dozen, probably like six, eight, and that's just a dozen right there. So, you know, it goes to show that it's hard to be healthy, but our, our people try to use this as an excuse. Like, oh, well, we try to eat healthy. I don't got money for that. Well, you got you to try your best. Yeah, but they got the money to get their nails done. Yeah. Their hair done. Yeah. yeah. They find that they fucking money. A, bu a bust down. Yeah. You go to the club, <laughs> they, yeah. they got that money. Buy a bottle every weekend. Yeah, but, to, but to invest in your health, they don't have it. Yeah. This is Leviticus 19, verse 16. Oh, I want to bring out the neighbor, what neighbor really means, right? Okay. It said, Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thy heart. Thou shalt not in any wise rebuke thy neighbor. Yeah. So when you go to neighbor, H5997, right? Let me see. Bear with me for a minute. Am I doing Oh, info? Yeah. yeah. Sure. One of those. Come, come. It's uh, here we go, yeah? Yep. It's uh, a meath from a primitive root meaning to associate companionship, hence a comrade or kindred man. Mm, kindred. Right? Kindred man. That's that's your brother. Yeah. Right? Or your sister. Yeah. Your kinfolk. Mm -hmm. Right? And when we're, when we're all, when we're dwelling in the same land, where neighbor was probably used because. Your, na your literal neighbor will be an Israelite, will be a brother right next to you. We dwell amongst ourselves. You know, during those times, the nations, it was all separate. It wasn't integrated with each other. So that's why the Bible, at that time, the word neighbor was used. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, because they could be a stranger, a girl, yeah. or not car, right? So there's two types of stranger: stranger of the heathens and stranger of our people, right? Yep. Let's try with the boy Ken. Let me get it real quick. Stranger. Um, well, yeah, I got a, I got a switch on what you bring out. Yeah, I mean, it's really just knowing what the scriptures are talking about. Um, this new mercy scripture, where the Lord saints come in to save his people from their sins. Go to Matthew 1. Matthew 1 and 22. And she shall bring forth a son, and that shall call his name Yahusha. We shall save his people from their sins. Save who? His people. Mm -hmm. Right. So that's that's a possessive noun right there. Well, he was come to save everybody. He would say it would say save the world from their sins. Well, I would say his people. Mm -hmm. You know, he could have said all people or everyone. It could have been different words right there. You know. Mm -hmm. if you give me First Thessalonians. Chapter 4, verse 15 and 16. Well, 4, verse. Here we just read verse 16 to 17. Which one are you? First Thessalonians 4, verse 16 to 17. First Thessalonians 4, 16 through 17. It said, For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven. With a shout, with the voice of the archangel, mm -hmm. and with the trump of Yahweh, and the dead in Mashiach shall rise first. Then, which we are alive, our remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. That's right. So we're, we're gonna, the Lord's gonna beam us up in those chariots. We're gonna meet them in the air, and that's what that's the day we're looking for, man. You know, so that's not talking about, you know, just literal clouds. You know, just those UFOs, they could blend in to those clouds right there. They could they could be within or look on the cloud, all hidden, all in plain sight. That's why Edomites are confounded by them. Mm -hmm. He doesn't really know what it is. That's why they want to, that's why they got something what called the Space Force or whatever. Trying to go to different heavens so they can be ready for the Lord's coming. You can't box with the Lord. You can. You, you're his creation. You're off too short. Yeah, it's too short to box of God. <laughs> we, uh, 1 Corinthians 15, verse 52, I guess the 53. I think that's what our I Am Legend was about. The I Am Legend when, I think an AI went rogue. Yeah. Right? He went rogue. That's and I think movie. he went to uh, kill the, the wait, president wait, of the AI I'm, company. I Robot. I Robot, thank yeah. you. You like it. Yeah. So I got it mixed up. So yeah, so AI went rogue, rogue. so yeah. Will Smith job was the finest AI that yeah. went rogue. Yeah. You know, so he was in this warehouse, there was a bunch of AI that looked alike. <laughs> yeah, that was attacking you know? him. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, so the AI went after the, the creator. Yeah, but in real life, you can't do that. You can't fight against the guy over shit, y'all shot. Yeah. He created you. Yeah, yeah. You can't mm -hmm. change his creation too. Y'all trying to change y'all, trying to change y'all genders. Yeah. You know, the Lord created you to be a man. Yeah. So be no a man. No matter how much surgery you do. Yeah. So you can be a man at the end of the day. The scripture said, Gird up thy loins like a man. Yeah. You yeah. know? If you cut up that stone, you can't be in the congregation of the Halva Shem Yel So you're going to put your lights out. That's right. All right. So, ah, damn, I, I had a lost my train of thought. Yeah, even though, no, thank you. Even though Satan. Right? Satan is Yahweh created. Because Satan works for the Most High. So how can Satan fight against the Most High? He was cast out of heaven. Yeah. You know, those, those church crazy. coons, man, they crazy. Man. And he asked the Lord permission to yeah. tell. Yeah, that's right. You know? Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, I mean, that was one of my lessons, um, or one of our lessons. Good, um, evil is just the absence of good, you know? The, the world was meant, it was supposed to be good, you know, from the Garden of Eden. But when the absence of good, 
when it was the absolute good, evil was brought forth. Right. How, however, it's still the Lord's creation. So when you stop doing, you know, the Lord's work, when you stop keeping His commandments, evil, that's when that's when there's evil. He's, Satan was able to tempt you through the Lord's permission. You know, he wasn't able to uh, to break free of that. It's just like uh, this is like gambling. People uh, people got a misconception about gambling that is is a form of evilness. But to be honest with you, gambling is a uh, it could be a form of discipline and having strong willpower because you are enticed with certain bets that's in front of you that I, yo I know I'm gonna win. You drop a hundred. Oh, I know I'm gonna win. I'm gonna drop a hundred. Yeah. I know I'm gonna win. I'm gonna drop a hundred. You know. So you drop three hundred dollars on bets, and guess what? You end up losing. Instead of you bet it small, yeah. wise, and precisely, and do your research, and have uh, self-discipline. Know the game. Yeah, yeah. And know the game. You could prosper in gambling. And gambling is not a sin according to the scripture. Because I'm gonna tell you something. Life is a, is a yeah. gambling. About to say that. Yeah. You can do Uber Eats, DoorDash, you can do anything. And guess what? You're gambling right there. Yeah. You don't know if you're going to make your home back. You don't know what might happen to your car. That's a gamble. So gamble got this uh, misconception that it is wicked and it's evil. Yeah. No. Gambling is about discipline, having strong yeah. willpower, and know what you get in it. I mean, just like everything else. Like, everything else. like me, like, is it a sin to eat meat? No, it's not. But when, you, when you're overindulging in meat, you know, or eating too much of it, or eating too much uh, of you're gambling. Food. Yeah. <laughs> Get out to life. Well, yeah, you're, you're definitely you're gambling. <laughs> too much alcohol, buying a bottle every day. That money adds up too. You gamble your money on alcohol. What's the difference between gambling and having a 401k plan at work? Yeah. You put your money in a 401k plan. Yeah. The company could match a dollar for dollar. Guess what? You're gambling. Right? Also, too, um... Guess what? Yeah. Once the stock market crash, your 401k is, is, is done. Yeah, it's gone. Right? When the money system is done, you think you'll get money back from your retirement? Guess what? You're gambling. Right? You buy a lotto ticket. Oh, man. The lotto is this a, such a mile. <laughs> you're spending $10 on uh, a lotto ticket. Guess what? You're gambling. <laughs> so why you said, why did sport gambling is evil? Right? Uh, casino is... No, you just got to have discipline. You just gotta have discipline, just like in life. The scripture said in Romans 8, right? Uh, what was that, Romans chapter 8? It said, he that live in the flesh is enmity with who? With the most high. Because you don't have no self-control. You spend your rent money, you spend your car note on gambling because you think you for sure you got it. Man, I had a passenger, man, a couple months ago. Yeah. He went to the casino. He dropped, how much he dropped? He won 1500 Oh boy. He won 1500 yeah. mm -hmm. Yo, he gained with a whole 1500 <laughs> dude, dude won, the dude won 3500 he, he still kept going. 3500 he dropped it. He dropped the whole 3500 Stop right there. Guess what happened? The man won $7,000. He dropped the 7000 and guess what happened? He lost it all. Because why? He was over in my damn backseat. He was telling me. He was in the back seat. He's the garbage man. He was crying. Damn man crying in the back. Right? It's better for a good well, thing. It's, discipline. Yeah. It's better for a good thing to end in his crime. You know, that's why. Like, that's like yeah, I mean, yeah, when you, you're betting, you should stop when you made. You know, you should, you should know when you have enough. You should be content. You should be content with the 3500 You know, or the 1500 Wait, you started with 1500 or that's how much you want? You want that. You gotta stop with fifteen hundred. I mean, that's a blessing right there. You know, it's, a, it's better for. Or good take thing. little portions of the fifteen hundred. Yeah, and invent that. Yeah. At least you, you, you walk with something. Yeah. Yeah, he didn't walk with shit. <laughs> he lost it. I know he was mad. Um, what I was gonna say, uh, yeah, it's better for a good thing in his prime. Like, I'm not saying those guys, what happened to them, were good. But like Tupac and Biggie, the reason why you have a good image of them in your head is they passed away when they was in their prime. Yes. Yes. You know. They might too. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so when you, yeah, yeah, so, yeah, life is a gamble, you know, ain't nothing wrong with it, it's just, you know, it's, it's, it's when you overindulge in it, you overindulge in anything, too much soda, soda should be like, soda's bad for you, okay, but like, you, you have a craving for soda, you get it every now and then, you know, if I, if I go for soda, I'll go for Sprite, you know, it's probably the least worst out of the bunch, you know, 
Yeah, they got, they got a few that they go to the gym, right? I know it's kind of getting off topic, but they go to the gym and they know they drink a diet of coke right after. You, what was the point of going to the gym? You know, you you working out your body, but you put a coke right after. No, no sense. No, you know, no, no, or a Fanta. A Fanta has like seventy nine grams of sugar. Let me find out how much. How Are much, you looking for that? Yeah. Uh, gamble a risk of something or value, or a game or a chance. Yeah. A game of chance. Life is a chance. But we don't study that, you know, because we we put our trust in your house to shame me out the shot. You know, leaving a house, it's a chance. It's a 50 chance. It could be 50 chance you might come back to the house, right? But we, we don't study that because the scripture said that just should live by what? By faith. Yeah. yeah that's right, man. 79 grams is 20 teaspoons. Mm -hmm. 20 teaspoons of sugar is in a Fanta. So are you, are you telling me that you, you would eat 20 teaspoons of sugar? It's all condensed into a bottle, man. Mm -hmm. That's how Esau is so smart. You see, <laughs> you made it into a liquid, yeah. so it's easy to consume yeah. that in a liquid form. Yeah. Something that fizzles, carbonated, with a whole bunch of sugar. So it's easy to consume that much sugar. Not even consume that much honey. Honey, yeah. natural honey is good. You know, it's consumed 20 teaspoons of honey. Especially not every day. Let's go back yeah. to the top. Yeah, give me a uh, First Corinthians 15. Um, so this is a good chapter, man. But point is at 52. We'll do a whole lesson next time just on this chapter. Yeah, 1 Corinthians 15, 52, and I guess the 54. You can start at, I started at 15. Yeah, I'll start at 54. Now, this is 1 Corinthians 15, starting at 50. Now, this I say, brethren. That flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of Yahweh. Neither do corruption inherit corruption. Incorruption. Corruption inherit. Oh, yes. Incorruption. Salakia. Right? Because corruption, uh, uh, go back to the Greek for Torah, which means destruction and perish or moral decay. Incorruption, it goes back to the Greek G861, apotasia. Yeah. And corruption, purity, free from what? Free from error. Yes, yeah, so this. Uh, yes, yeah, so this verse is going back to Romans chapter mm -hmm. eight about the wages of what sin is death. Mm -hmm. You know, and sin is brought through the desires of the flesh. And here it says that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. You know, so that's well, that's what the next verse is going to talk about. Mm -hmm. But you know, when you follow in what your flesh wants, you're not going to be able to inherit the kingdom of God. If you follow what you, your desires. Temptations. Yeah. Yeah, but you got chairs moments like this because when it's hot, no bees be around, yeah. flies. Yeah. You know, so it's a disadvantage that advantage to it. You Sweating. know what I'm mean? saying? Yeah, Sweating. Pros, pros and cons. <laughs> yeah. Behold, I show you a mystery. I'm on verse 51. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. Mm. In a moment, in a twinkle of an eye, the last trump, and the funny thing is, it's Trump about to become president. <laughs> the last it's Trump. The last Trump. <laughs> right? Yep. At the last Trump, for the trumpet shall sound. There's a trumpet again. And the dead shall rise incorruptible, and we shall be changed. So in the twinkle and eye, the world's going to change our bodies. We're going to be like Powers. demigods. Yep. You know, like the Asgardians. And then we were talking about this earlier. You know, the older they Asgardians get, the stronger they get, the more yep. powerful. You know, we'll be able to run. You throw a car at us. Yep. You probably catch it, get hit. Yep. You get right back up. Like John Hancock, yep, yep, he example. wasn't right in front of that train. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it just, yeah, it just broke. It broke mm -hmm. on him. The train. You more worried for the train than for John Hancock. <laughs> yeah, oh, there's so much examples. We won't be able to run without getting tired. You know, we we'll to run, we'll be able to fly. You know, stamina. Our stamina is going to be up. Our stamina is terrible. Right? Even when we work out, that's not the way our stamina is supposed to be. Because even when we eat healthy. Which we are supposed to, like, we're still in this, like, polluted world. We're supposed to be taller than we are, you know? Just like an avatar. They were, like, they're tall. You know, uh, fruits are going to be bigger. Like, the grapes, the apples. A lot of the fruits diminish from what they what they used to be. Like, bananas used to have seeds. They don't even got seeds no more. That shows you how Esau just messed up everything, man. Yeah. You know? Yeah, facts. Uh, have it stopped?
Oh, oh. It's going, right? Yeah, it's going. Yeah, yeah it's going. Um, yeah, just like uh, I had a guy in my car yesterday, man. His name is Kevin Palmer. He used to play for the Wizards. He was a NBA player. Now he's uh, he's overseas. He said, Kevin said, well, he in Italy and these different countries, he don't gain weight as much. There you, go. you don't gain weight like that. But when he comes to the States, yo, he said, the food is so fucked up, he gained weight quick. He's an NBA player. He was in my car yesterday, man. Cool dude, man. Yeah, brothers could look him up, Kevin Palmer. Yeah, I mean. Right? But yeah. now he's played overseas. Hmm? Yeah, I was saying my trip to Hondu, Honduras, I was eating chicken out there, and I was using the bathroom pretty well for eating chicken. Mm -hmm. You know, you got, you got here, you got to eat a lot of greens with the chicken. You know, mm -hmm. chicken got, you know, you never know, even when it's home cooked. It might have, that chicken might have hormones in it, even if it says it doesn't have hormones in it. Yeah. Sometimes. There's, there's another guy, he's a YouTuber, he's a cool dude. He goes to different countries and takes fast foods in different com uh, uh, countries. So what he did, he went to Japan and tasted their KFC fried chicken yep. to compare to United States KFC. He said their they chicken, it tastes good, but it's not old, over, overly abundant with seasoning. Because you, know, you gotta remember KFC throw a lot of MSG in their chicken. But Japan chicken, they don't have MSG. It's more of like a natural uh, type of flavor. Yeah. He said US is chicken tastes better that's because we condition to consume all that MSG. Yeah. So when we taste yeah. chicken, you know, overseas, yeah. we're like, oh man, you know. But it's natural. It's more natural compared to KFC Even, chicken. Even uh, cookies, like Trinidad. That, sorry, Trinidad KFC Trinidad, chicken, yeah. chicken. It tastes good, but you you can tell it's not overabundant with MSG. Yeah. Like like there's certain cookies that you compare. Even though they still got like a lot of additives and preservatives. Like the cookies in Trinidad or some of these other islands, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. you compare it to out here, it's not as sweet. Yeah, like they you biscuits know? and all that. Yeah, uh, yes, yeah. You kill them. Yeah. But, yeah, and we got conditioned. We got used to that taste yeah. over there. And when we came over, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. this yeah. cookie's sweet. sweet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it wasn't even. Yeah, yeah, because you know I used to kill them there cookies with milk and put them on oatmeal. Yeah, you know. But as we yeah. stayed in Trinidad, we kind of broke off with from all that sweet. Yeah, as we started. Be more learning educated. More, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, then we eat more like nuts, you know, Not planted just chips. Yeah. Just it just was good, though. Yeah. Delicious, you know. Not just like perfect sweet. Perfect sweet. It's not yeah. over sweet, huh? Get a uh, Second Corinthians 5 and 10. Yeah. Second Corinthians 5 and 10. you really close it. Second Corinthians 5 and 10. Oh, beautiful. But we must all appear before the judgment seat of Mashiach, that everyone may receive the things done in his body according to that he has done, whether it be good or bad. That's right. That's going to be the final court case right there. The Lord is going to look at your actions and see what you did, you know? See, people are see if you was following them faithfully, just like Abraham did. Abraham was faithful to the Lord. You know, so that's that's what the Lord's going to look for in the house of judgment. It's like in Ezekiel nine four, saying He's going to start with the house of uh, what house of Israel first, yep. and He's going to judge us first. We're we're supposed to be a royal priesthood, so that's, we're supposed to know better. Yeah, we're supposed to know better. You know, it's just like uh, I think there was a parable like that. Like the I think the master that goes away, and the servant that knew, and the servant that didn't know. The servant that knew, he's going to be punished more than the servant that didn't know. It's just more like ignorance right there. So the Israelites who are keep who are serving God faithfully and probably never came across it, uh, the prophets, they'll be saved. You know, because they had a zeal for the Lord. They just didn't, you know, know all of the things. But it's faith that's going to save you. It's not just the commandments. It's faith in the Lord. Believing in Him, that's going to save you. But practice and rehearse the righteous acts, which well, yeah. is the law, right? That's right. So just like... Uh... Like Bruce Lee said, Bruce Lee said, I don't fear the man that can kick uh, 10,000. I don't fear the man that kicked 10,000 times. I fear the man that mastered one kick 10,000 yeah. times. Yeah, that's right. You know what I'm saying? It's <laughs> consistent. When you, yeah, be consistent. Yeah. So when you be consistent, that's something most likely you're going to uh, achieve, right? Because this being a plumber, 
a electrician, right? Uh, any uh, occupation you choose to do, yeah. especially being a young man, if you feel like, oh man, fuck this shit, I'm gonna do something <laughs> I'm else. Out. But if you stick with it, yeah. sometimes you gotta deal with the elements, right? You, yeah. you, gotta, you gotta stick with it. And by the time you know it, you're gonna be rewarded. Right? You're gonna be like, ah, man, two years with my look where I'm at now, yeah. you know what I'm saying? So don't be a quitter, you know. Be be a achiever. And when you be a achiever, that means you was consistent throughout. And you were persistent and you were resilient in the occupation or whatever you're trying to master, even the commandments, right? If you want pork, you gotta take yourself off that shit. Right? Master of being become uh, a dietitian, a uh, 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 wholesome eater. Master that. And yeah. guess what? What reward are you going to get? A healthy body, sound body, you're going to be strong, your energy is going to increase. I'm just giving an example. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, I mean, um, it's like working. Like, if you keep switching up your workout routine, even though you are working out consistently, you might not see results as a person who has a specific, dedicated workout routine. Like, two days they work out upper body, and then two days legs, and then, you know, maybe two rest days after that. That person that's stuck to that routine are going to receive the results fast. If they're consistent on that routine they're doing. Mm -hmm. you know? it's, all, it's all about staying consistent. Or what about a person that was doing the works every day for one year versus the person that did the works, you know, that never stopped once every, once every week for all the years he's been in the truth. It's all about consistency. Or working out every day for 10, for 10 minutes you see results more than a person who worked out for a month straight and stopped working out. They didn't, they didn't stay in it. Yep, they left yep. the race. Started off the race strong, fast, you know. It's like, it's true. Right? Running through everyone. Yeah. And then you're like, ah, oh, I'm tired. I'm going to stop. And just like, uh, this is Psalms 119, verse 104. Through thy precepts, I get understanding. Therefore, I hate every false way. But, right. you know, it's imperative. Uh, it's when you come in as truth, you got to go through a precept. You got to go through a precept. Precepts. Because when I buy Zabak, right, Zabak stick with the basic foundation. Even though when you see Sakari, you know, they go, they try to go deep going to these big words and so yeah, on. And like, yeah, yeah, yeah. really technically, really. Yeah. and that's what I love about Pasa uh, what was that, Pasa Gabar? No, Ariamla. Yeah. Ariamla said, man, stick with the foundation. Yeah. If you go too deep, you're going to drown. Yeah. You don't yeah. need to go too deep. As long as you book. know that basic foundation, it's like uh, I was in Trinidad for what, nine years? Right? Since I had the basic understanding of a driving a car, it was easy for me to get behind yeah, the wheel. Yeah, sure. My first day, I was nervous. Second day, I was not nervous. Then after the third day, I was like, oh, okay. You got the basic foundation. How to steer a car, yeah. you know, how to make your turn, when to make your turns and so on. Right? It's instilled in you. Right? So the basic foundation is what's going to get you through. Yeah, the first day of driving, you're not going to be trying to do donuts and drifting. Yeah. <laughs> it's speed racing. Yeah. You're going to start off with the basics. I mean, that's what's going to save you. Mm -hmm. I got two more scriptures here. Let me go to uh, Revelation 3 and 10. Oh, the hearing the turtles, yeah. Perfect. The hearing the turtles, perfect. Yeah. Perfect in that. Yeah, the turtles is slow, and he stayed consistent throughout the race. The hearing got complacent. Oh, I'm fast this, dude. I'm going to take a break. Let me, let me sit by the apple tree. Yes, 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 yes. Take yes, a little yes. nap. <laughs> yes. And then I'll get back into it. Nah, you, you got you to gotta keep on it. You got to keep the grind. No. Yeah, it's like, you know, Uber and Lyft drivers. Uh, it's like a gambler I had met the other day. You know, he started with 500, now he got 5,000 because he was consistent, right? He make his five bets, he put 10 to $15, and he did that throughout the day. Smart. He was being consistent. Right? Yeah, yeah. It goes back to probabilities. What's your probability that you're going to hit? Uh, you bet five times in a day. What's your probability? It might be two out of out of five. It might be three out of five. It might be zero out of five. But you don't. You're not supposed to be discouraged. You're supposed to continue. And anything you do, you're supposed. To, and it's positive. The Lord said, "Be occupied till I come." You know, be consistent. That's right. Yeah. He said, "Well, um, until I come, he said to watch." And yeah, we gotta be the watchman. Oh, you me what, sir? Well, Revelation 3 and 10. Gotcha. Revelation 3, verse 10. It said, Because thou hast kept thy word of my patience, I will I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon all the, the world 
to try them that dwell upon the earth. Right. Behold, I come quickly. Hold that fast what thou hast, that no man take thy crown. Mm. That was on level one. Uh, <laughs> I ain't hit far from the wild. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, so it said, yeah. since you endure, the Lord's gonna he's gonna save you from the hour of temptation, the hour of trial. Mm. So the Lord, He's giving you something for your hard work. All right, you was out there doing the works, or for someone who wasn't doing the work, like wasn't out here preaching, but that was keeping the laws faithfully. You know, and when they did have the, the chance to teach someone, they did teach someone, and they were consistent with it. No, it's not a lie. Yeah, I, I gotta, I'm gonna upload it right after. I'm the window. Yeah, yeah, you was looking for the other uh, UI format. But yeah, since you were, you know, doing the works faithfully, you know, you was practicing good values, good principles, the Lord said he's gonna save you from the hour of trial. When these, when these, uh, these two thirds that were mocking you, you know, when they were mocking you, they were doing what, they're going to the club every Sunday, Saturday, you know, doing vile acts. You know, they, they wasn't enduring, you know. They wasn't enduring, they wasn't practicing good values, they were evil towards their brother, shooting their brother, you know, being evil towards their neighbor, practicing jealousy, the Lord is going to destroy them in that hour of trial. It's like you think you, you was consistent doing wicked, wicked things, you have to be consistent in doing righteous things. Uh -huh. right. Yeah, so you was consistent in being wicked, the Lord's going to give you wicked men. He's going to give yeah. you a wicked missile. Yeah. <laughs> you, what is it saying? You wicked what you say? Yeah. yeah. That's what you did, so that's what you get. Yeah. Yeah. Last scripture, Matthew 24, verse 30 to 31. You say you pay for what you get. <laughs> you go to, you go to five and below, and you can get the best quality product. You know, you didn't give your all into it. No. Uh, verse 30 to 31. Matthew 24, verse 30 through 31. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn. And they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet. There it goes, that trumpet. And they shall get together his elect from the four winds and from one end of the heaven to the other. Wow, that's what we're waiting for. And those are the four winds again. So the Lord is going he's gonna, to he's gonna save his elect from the four winds of the earth, the four corners of the earth. We know that through um, Isaiah chapter 11 and James 1 verse 2, who are scattered abroad. So, yeah, man, that's, that's what we're waiting for. He's going to come through his clouds with power and great glory. You know, he's just talking about act, you know, regular clouds. That's the time we're waiting for. Okay. Come. Yeah. We give. That's it. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. We give all praises to Yahweh, Hashem, Yahweh Shai, Hashem Rakach Gosh. Death to America, death to Esau, death to the two thirds, and death to these heathens. So I pray. So you say that? Yep.